Please welcome Ben Chippen. Congrats. Thank you. It continues to roll along for you? Yeah, the Dragon's Den experience has been nothing but positive. Everywhere I go, I get pitched on business ideas yeah. now. I mean, it's crazy. I go to a restaurant in Kitchener-Waterloo a lot. I pulled out of my parking spot the other day, and a guy pulled in like Starsky and Hutch and blocked me off. I couldn't get out. Really? And he got out and pitched me on a business idea. <laughs> I'm in. It was great. No, I'm just kidding. Does he, <laughs> does he recognize that that is not exactly the best way to open with somebody? Yeah, well, it's, yesterday, probably the classic one, I had a lady get in touch with me and say, would you like to invest in my business before I go bankrupt? Very strange positioning, right, yeah. really. I said no to that one, uh, which seemed quite logical to me. No, it's all been fun. The CBC has been great to work with. The other dragons are fantastic people. Kevin is obviously uh, yeah. different, but he's great. Uh, you know, he and I get along very well. Is it a clique, like the, the hard thing to break into? It was initially because they have an established chemistry. And even the byplay, the conversational byplay and the humor, they know how to go off each other. So I found the first few weeks of taping a little challenging that way. Plus, you raised your whole life not to interrupt. Well, I'm telling you, if you don't interrupt on that panel, you're not getting in. I mean, they are full steam ahead. So I had to adjust to that a little bit, but they're very welcoming, nice people. They really are. Everybody has that shared caring for entrepreneurs, yeah. and I think that pulls the whole group together. On the concept of being nice, and Kevin O'Leary, we have a question for you. David, you're always telling everybody how you're always so happy all the time. <laughs> you're so full of crap. What really pisses you off? Let me know, because that's what I'm going to do as soon as I see you. <laughs> That's, it's, it's so ironic that the one thing that pisses me off actually asked the question. So really, uh, it's, it doesn't even make sense logically, but you pulled it off. You know, I'll tell you one thing about Kevin. What a great sense of humor. I mean, he is a funny guy. I mean, he really is. He's one of the most quick-witted people I've ever met. I hate to say that on air because he'll use it against me, but he really is sharp. But nothing really pisses me off. You and I get along exceptionally well yeah. because we're very like-minded that way. Like, we yeah. tend to talk about a lot of different issues and are very community. I, I, I don't get too down. I, I'm a lucky guy. I'm a charmed guy. Right. I remember this great commercial from the late 90s of Michael Jordan, and it was, he was, walk, it was for a commercial for Nike, but he was walking in talking about all the times he made a mistake, all the things he did, all his failures, and through his failures, it's why he succeeds. Yeah. And I wondered for you, as a successful guy, have you had those failures? Oh, my gosh. It's the nature of the game. You're taking risks. You're trying things. In fact, if you're not failing a lot, you're probably not trying enough. You try to limit the downside, and you make sure you make the right calculations. But I've made all kinds of mistakes. In fact, I ran one entire business, a food business, quite poorly. I just wasn't good at it. It naturally didn't fit with me. I didn't kind of get it. And so, what sure, we make mistakes. Is this the frozen food business? Yeah, it was the frozen food business. And when I left the business, it went straight up. And it was not coincidental. I just didn't have the knack for that business. So we all make mistakes. I, I look back on a lot of my mistakes quite fondly. I'm not sure my, my partners agree, but I do. <laughs> I, I think they're a lot of fun. No, it's the nature of life. In fact, you know, David has weighed in for, for many of this for many years, including uh, giving the president some advice. David, I would love your opinion on how to fix the U.S. economy. Spend less than you make, invest conservatively, and for heaven's sakes, do not build up big debts. Hmm. Not gonna happen. By the way, what is the U.S. national debt? $16 trillion. <laughs> you got any other ideas? Follow the Canadian example. Steady economy, stable banking system, stronger beer. I, uh, Alan Park did a great job. Hey, wow. He, he's fantastic. You know, honestly, doing the Air Force was a great thrill. I mean, 40 years it's been around. I enjoyed that immensely. My mom and dad got a huge kick out of it. They really did. And, and later, I taped Arctic Air. And I'm going to be doing it later in the season. And, and I, I love doing that. I love Arctic Air. I really do. I enjoy the show immensely. CBC has more good shows right now than they've ever had. Yeah, yeah we're I making mean, Canadian shows. Absolutely. You want to talk about a job crisis, we're hiring Canadians. Yeah, that's right. It's very <laughs> that, true. I mean, I love Mr. D. Oh, like that amazing. is a classic show. I mean, he is funny. So let's say you get, you're lucky enough to get twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000. You got it. You want to invest. Could be a severance. Could be a whatever. Right. Um, People would always say, put it in your RSPs. If you got 20, 15, 20 grand now, what do you do with that money? Well, I think for a lot of people, paying down their debt's a good move. I mean, interest rates aren't very high, so on the surface, people would say, why should I do that? But inflation is low. Your after-tax rate of return is quite reasonable. You can't screw it up. Anybody can pay down a debt. It reduces stress. It frees up uh, cash flow. I think for a lot of people, that's not a bad first priority. Then once your debts, your non-deductible debts are paid off, then start focusing more and more on RSPs and TFSAs and so on and so forth. You know, buying property is still a good move? It can be, but I mean, Real estate's had a 20, 25-year run. I mean, as interest rates have declined consistently for that time frame, you've seen real estate go up dramatically relative to incomes. It's pretty pricey. So I'm not sure in every part of the country that'll be a prudent move. I think, again, paying down debt and sticking to the old-fashioned virtues is a good idea. Now stick around more with David Children right after this. All right, up next, we're going to dig deep with David and find out the truth about the dragons and maybe what they're really like. I throw the wealthy barber under the bus. Don't use it.
<laughs> Sam's always the first one down the stairs. So this was where the editing was done for the book. It was a lot of fun, you know, good memories. We set up card tables to do the whole thing, and month after month down here in the basement producing The Wealthy Barber. Yeah, that's it, right? It's, I wrote the, 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 the two books were written 22 years apart, and I wrote them on the same card table. And I sat in the same chair, although the chair eventually hurt my back the second time because I'm old and I had to get a better chair. <laughs> and uh, my mom and my, uh, was very involved making the meals, and my dad and my sister were the editors. So it was very much a family project. My mom filled the orders out of the garage on Sundays and used to buy pizza for everybody that night. I didn't have any money to pay for it, frankly, just starting out. And I put every cent I had in the book. Yeah. In fact, I mentioned to you before, one of the great ironies of The Wealthy Barber was I cashed out my RRSP to print The Wealthy Barber. <laughs> the whole book says, never touch your RRSP. <laughs> and I actually had to cash my own out to print it. But it started slow, didn't it? It did. You know, it's a, a strange story. The first year sales were not impressive, I and mean, they were not bad, but there was nothing there to indicate what was going to happen in the second year. In April or May of the second year, it went ballistic. I mean, it started selling 25. The military gave you the bur a, bur a burst? Yeah, the military gave me a big burst. They bought copies for a lot of the young recruits, and then uh, Canada Trust, uh, in the pre-TD days, put it up in the branches and actually sold it. And that gave it exposure to non-bookstore attendees. And all of a sudden, it went nuts through word of mouth and started selling 25 and 35,000 copies a month. And uh, who could have seen it? I've had one good idea in my life, but I'm glad I had it when I was young. Yeah, that yeah. was key. <laughs> all right, anthropology. So you've been on the show for a while now, Dragons. And so I'm going to ask you some questions. And you tell me which of the Dragons is more likely to do this okay. or not, okay? Who's more likely to steal your lunch from the fridge? Kevin. <laughs> Give you a lift home from work? Arlene. Ask you to water their plants. Well, Jim is on the road so much, I'm going to go with Jim for sure. Now, if you asked one of them to water your plants, who would actually show up? I'm going to go with Bruce. Bruce and you are very similar, aren't you? Yeah, we are. We get along very well, too. We've seen each other a lot in the off-taping time. Great guy. I mean, it's pretty fine to say somebody's similar to you and then say he's a great guy, but yeah. I snuck that in there. <laughs> I thought that was really good. Yeah, very you, clever, subconscious. Did he give you a free Lava Life account? Yeah, he did not, but he did push me to use the services. <laughs> and I need them. God knows I need them, so yeah. Dude, yeah, that must be... Go be, ahead. Okay, look. <laughs> Go ahead, say it. Being a man of resources, having cash is, makes it difficult enough to meet a partner. Then to have profile me on television, it skews a lot of it. How are you navigating being the famous guy in that respect? Um, you know, it, it's interesting. People are always nice, always polite when they come up, and, and uh, I st still live a very low-key life. I almost never go out. I mean, I really, I'm really low-key that way. I, I, I eat at the same diner almost every day. I go home, I watch the CBC, I listen to the CBC on the radio, and I watch the CBC online. Who's... Of all the I don't really that. <laughs> That's pathetic, all right? Yeah. I mean, I'm not that bad, all I right? follow up because <laughs> yeah. he was bullying. Yeah, exactly. All right. <laughs> Back to the anthropology. If, you were to, if someone was going to borrow a, a book from you, and then forget to return it. Who's more likely to forget to return it? Kevin. Who's more likely to write a hit novelty song? Oh, that's a good one. I think Jim. He's very quick at that kind of thing. Yeah. Do jail time. Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to ask why. Who's more likely to start fires for attention? Oh, that's interesting. Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm going to present you, as a guy that has to now make choices of what you're going to invest in, I'm going to present you with some patents. Four inventions. <laughs> I'm doing a lot of this right now. Are you really? Yeah. Well, four inventions. Two of them are actually patented in Canada. Two of them are made up. Okay. Which would you invest in? A karaoke corrector. It adds supportive backup vocals if you start to sing off-key. Chuck Norris glasses. Glasses that you wear to watch all movies. One lens has a tiny Chuck Norris painted on it so that every film you watch actually stars Chuck Norris. <laughs> More than just in your heart, but in reality. <laughs> a hat with rear view mirrors, because some people are super paranoid, right? Yeah. Or a lawnmower amplifier, which is an attachment for most standard lawnmowers that you know, increases the decibel level or decreases it, that kind of thing. I would invest in number one and number three. Well, this is why you're a successful dragon, because you invested in the two that are actually real. Although, honestly, the Chuck Norris glasses, bro? Good idea. Billion dollars. Very good idea. Billion dollars. No question about it. Dragon's Den, new day and time, Sundays at 8 o'clock, right here on the Mother Corporation. David Chilton, everybody. And we're back. <laughs>